Welcome back, everyone. OK, what we're going to do today is simulate the logistic map. So this is a discrete time system. xk plus 1 equals beta times xk times 1 minus xk. And we're going to simulate this in MATLAB. And we're, what we're going to do is increase this beta parameter. So we're going to go from beta equals 0 all the way up to 4. And we're going to get some really cool diagrams of what happens with the system. Okay, So I just want to show you kind of how to plot this and how to work with this in MATLAB. It's kind of a fun example that you've probably seen uh, a few times before. And so I want to show you how to code this up. Okay, So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a vector called x vowels. So we're going to store all of our x values in this increasing size vector. Um, I should probably, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk through this beta parameter. So I'm going, to, I'm going to, to increase my beta and simulate this dynamical system and watch where these points go. And I'm going to do that for every increasing value of beta. So I'm going to say for um, beta equals, let's say, 0 in increments of 0.1 all the way up to 4. What we're going to do is uh, I'll just print beta to the screen so that it'll, it'll count down here through beta. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with an initial condition. Usually I start with an initial condition um, x not equals 0.5. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we want to know what the, what the steady state behavior is, not the transients. So I'm going to take this initial condition 0.5 and I'm going to run it through here a bunch of times. Maybe it'll be, there will be a fixed point and it'll just map to the same thing over and over. Maybe it will be, there will be a periodic orbit and it'll bounce back and forth between a couple of x values. Or maybe it'll be chaotic and it'll go all over the place. But what I want to do is I want to take this x value and iterate it through a bunch of times so that it, it, it hits steady state. And then I want to store a few thousand of the steady state values because it's going to look really cool. Okay. So we're going to say uh, x old equals 0.5. And for uh, i equals 1 to, let's say, 2,000. I'm going to do this 2,000 times to get rid of the transient. I'm going to say x new equals x old minus x old squared times beta. And at the end of that iteration, x old equals x new. So notice here I'm just saying uh, x minus x squared times beta. So this is a little bit faster to compute. Uh, and after every time uh, my old vector, my new vector becomes the old vector, I plug it in, I get my new vector, uh, and this iterates over and over. This is a really cheesy way of just saying xk plus 1 equals some function of xk. And at the end of the time step, x k plus 1 becomes, you know, my, my k increases 1. OK, so this is just going to be, let me say, um, transient. I'm just going to run this transient. I'm not going to save any of this data. It's just going to evolve onto the attractor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start saving the data. I'm going to iterate more. OK, so now what I'm going to do is, um, how do I want to do this? I'm going to, in fact, save it until it gets arbitrarily close to itself again. Okay, So for i equals 1 to 1,000, I'm going to say x new equals uh, x old minus x old squared times beta. x old equals x new. And now I'm actually going to save these values. So I'm going to save the beta value, and I'm going to save the, the x value. So I'm going to say x vals the first value, length of x vals plus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to the length. And I'm going to store in that current beta value. And then I'm going to have uh, x vals 2, length of x vals. Let's just go here. And it's already increased the length in this line, so I don't have to do it again here. This is going to equal x new. So basically, this x vals uh, structure, the first, I guess, row is going to be all of the beta values. And the second row is going to be all of these x values. And what I'm going to eventually be able to do is make a cool scatter plot 
and it's going to be this bifurcation diagram of the logistic map that you've seen before. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't want to save, if I have a really boring solution where it's just a fixed point and x new is equal to x old, I, I don't want this to run through a thousand iterations. So I'm going to break it if it gets arbitrarily close to itself. So what I want to do is I want to say um, x steady state equals x new. And uh, if my new solution minus my steady state solution is less than 0 0.001, then I'm going to break the loop. So I'm only going to keep going if I'm more, if I'm more than 0 0.001 different than my, my kind of initial condition up here. And then I think I can end. I can end through my beta loop. Um, and now what I can do is I can make a cool plot of all of these values. Okay, so I'm going to plot uh, x vals to colon. Um, I'm going to flip this thing upside down. Actually, why don't I just do it like this? I'll do um, x vals one colon. Here, why don't I do it in order? Okay, I want line width uh, point 0.1. I want marker size 1.2. I want color to be uh, white, which is I think 111, hopefully. And then I'm going to set my GCA color to be uh, black and my X color to be white, my Y color to be white. And I'm going to set my color GCF to be color black. Okay, let's hope this runs. I'm going to run it. No errors. It went super fast. And I don't know if you saw how fast it went through all those betas. And here what we have, this is the beta parameter. And these are the x values that got stored. Okay, so now maybe I should, uh, I'll just do a, an x label. Uh, this is beta and y label are all of my x points. Run super fast, okay? And so what we see is that as we increase beta from 0 to 1, the fixed point, there's one fixed point, and it's at x equals 0. So it basically means if beta is less than 1, whatever I plug into here is going to go to 0 very quickly. So after that transient period, everything died out and went to 0, and I get this, this 0 here. And then as I increase beta from 1 to about 3, I get a fixed point, a single fixed point, um, this iterates and it eventually converges to this fixed point for that beta parameter and then stays there for every future iteration. And then at beta 3, you see that now I get two solutions and what's going to happen is the x is going to bounce back and forth between these two solutions. This is called a periodic orbit where basically the population is bouncing back and forth for every generation. It's bigger than smaller than bigger than smaller. As I increase the beta more, you can see that now this period doubles and I have four solutions. So now that's a quasi-periodic orbit. So I'm going to bounce back and forth between these. And as you crank up that parameter beta even more between about 3.5 and 4, the system goes chaotic and you get this really rich, interesting uh, attractor where the X is kind of spending a lot of time just bouncing around in these regions. Okay, So I'm going to do a couple of things now and plot um, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to flip the order of these because I want it to look like cool mountains. Okay, and I'm going to do, uh, what do I want to do? End val. What is end val? Minus, okay, like four minus, yeah, four minus all of this. Let's run this. Okay, so now I basically turn this thing up on its head and now I should change the labels to Y label and X label. And now I have this cool thing that looks kind of like a mountain. Uh, I really should flip my, um, flip my y axis because now the labels are wrong. This should be 4 and this should be 3, but we'll go with it. Uh, in fact, let me just turn my labels. Um, how do I do that? That's not too hard. Um, I'm going to set GCA x tick. Uh, x ticks to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And my x tick labels to be 4, 3, 
two, one, zero. Okay, this might crash my computer because it says, uh, what does it say? There's no X ticks property, there's probably just an X tick. That works, okay. Um, crap, but I changed my X ticks, not my Y ticks, so all I have to do is change this to a Y. Okay, so this is one of the joys of live coding is that you get to see all of the errors I make, but you also hopefully will get to learn how to do this yourself, okay? So notice now, I, because I flipped this, um, now I'm flipping my Y tick marks, so I'm relabeling them to go from zero to four instead of, uh, instead of going up. And now you get this kind of cool mountain looking structure here um, in this bifurcation diagram. So one thing I'm going to do that I think is going to be interesting is let's not cut out the transient. Okay, so I removed all of this transient here uh, because I thought it would be cool to show you. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to comment that out so it's actually not going to remove the transient anymore and we're going to plot all of that transient. So when I start from 0.5, it's going to have to iterate some time before it converges onto those fixed points. Ooh, now x new equals, uh, let's do that. And now you can see this kind of cool transient um, iteration. So essentially, after one iteration, x jumps to zero if beta is zero. But then as beta increases, as beta increases, notice now that x jumps eventually, uh, what am I trying to say? You can see all these lines here. These are the, the iterations that it takes for x to go to zero. So it, it jumps from, from 0.5 to here, then to here, then here, then here, then here, then here. And it takes some time for it to iterate to that fixed point. And similarly for it to iterate onto this fixed point line. Uh, and so it's a little messy. So this is why I cut out the transient because I just wanted you to see this steady state behavior. Okay, so let's go back and keep that transient. Um, I want this to look a little cooler, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an even smaller value of beta, 0.01. I'm going to cut out more transients, so 5,000. And I'm going to run this thing for uh, 10,000 points. So this is going to take a lot longer. Uh, I hope, in fact, this runs in a reasonable amount of time. And one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to set my Y limits. Uh, I'll do that later. Okay, now you can see my beta takes some time to, to spin up. And this is a lot more filled in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my Y limits. Uh, my y, um, y limits from 3 to 4, I think. Is that what I want to do? That wasn't good. Um, I want to set my y limits from 0 to 1. Perfect. Okay? So I've essentially zoomed in to this beta region from 3 to 4 where all the interesting stuff was happening. And you can see, remember it was just a single fixed point up here, and now it's split into this periodic orbit, and it's split again into this quasi-periodic orbit, and then eventually after a few more period doublings, it gets fully chaotic. Okay? So anyway, it's pretty easy to, to simulate these iterations just with a for loop. Usually I get rid of the transients and look at the steady state behavior. And if you plot this in a cool enough, you know, if you transpose it and plot it and zoom in, you can make these beautiful pictures which I think look like mountains. Okay, so I call these mathematical mountains. You can make really cool art like this. You can make cooler colors. I mean, why don't we just try that? Um, instead of plotting it in white, why don't we just make it, uh, what is it, RGB. So let's make it um, super blue, okay? So like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, let's just run this and see how cool it looks. And then I'll do my Y limb. And you can see this really, really neat uh, kind of blue mountain structure, okay? So it looks really cool, very easy to simulate. And it's one of the things I think is interesting is, you know, this is a crude model for population dynamics. You could derive this and why, why this is a good model for population dynamics. Basically because I could start with xk plus 1 equals beta xk. That would just be like exponential growth at some rate, you know, beta. 
And then you realize there, the Earth doesn't have infinite resources, so there's some carrying capacity. And if X gets large enough, where you know the, carry, the, the, large, the biggest size of population I can have is one, when I get large enough, I should start multiplying it by something that gets closer and closer to zero. So this basically is a model where um, in X over time, you grow exponentially until you get close to your carrying capacity of one, and then you eventually kind of roll off. That's at least how you could derive this logistic map very simply for a population dynamic. But then what's interesting is as you get this different increasing rate beta, so maybe the system grows really, really, really fast or really, really, really slow, you can get these uh, very, very different behaviors. So these are the behaviors you can get at a particular value of beta. And you can see that the behavior is very different as you increase beta. And alarmingly, as you make your growth rate faster and faster and faster, your system gets more and more chaotic. So it bounces around, it's more erratic. And so this maybe should give us some indication, at least in this crude model, that having you know, breakneck population growth, really big beta, is a bad idea. Okay? Um, because you get this kind of chaotic behavior here. Okay, so very easy to simulate uh, discrete time dynamical systems in MATLAB. You can make beautiful pictures. Please play around with this and try it yourself. Okay, thank you.